Right, it's time for a little trip. Roll the title. Morning all, it's been a long time. Um, over a year now since my last video. Hey, it was in Bristol Harbour Festival. And today I thought I'd go on a long trip to Bristol via Avery Stone Circle, Silbury Hill and uh, Long Barrow, but in the opposite order. And um, yeah, so what's happened since, uh, since um, I was last, uh, well, from the last video, well, I've moved back to Guildford in Surrey uh, to be closer to my children. Uh, quite a lot of happen things happened. I was building a motorhome for a Mercedes Sprinter and it got stolen. Uh, so I've had bought by a new van. I'm still waiting for the insurance to pay out. And um, my GoPro's just packed up for the outside of the van, so which is no good. Um, so I can't film any outside shots, even from the bonnet onwards. First stop is uh, Long Barra, so we're going to go through there first. Whoa, two degrees! I'll be taking my top off in a minute. You don't want to see that. No. Traffic's bad and it's only 8 o'clock in the morning on the Saturday morning. Um, bloody 8, sorry. I wish I was back in Bristol, but my children live here, so there's nothing I can do until they're older and I'll be back there. Right, now on the A303. I um, just wanted to say hello to Austin. Um, I speak to him a lot on Facebook. He's the uh, Scudo camper. He's the one who inspired me to start doing the, the camping in the van, really. And uh, unfortunately, like I said earlier, it's been put back because I had to fit Scudo myself originally in 2006, bought it in 2006. And I partly exchanged it with 180,000 miles on the clock. Had it from new. I, Oh, and the good thing about it is, it is, it is the, um, the glow plugs, I only changed them last year and, um, and the, even the AA was surprised that the glow plugs had lasted 12 years. So uh, anyway, so um, I pie exchange it for a Mercedes Sprinter and um, a long wheelbase one. So I pie exchanged it and unfortunately I only got £300 for it. So. Um, there was some brake issues with my van as well, and that's what made me wanted to get another van. And I just couldn't be bothered to keep paying out for the brakes to be fixed all the time. I'm not a mechanic. I like electronics, but I'm not good at mechanics. Um, what else was there? Well, so anyway, so I bought two solar panels to go on to the roof of the Mercedes Sprinter. Um, bought a 400-pound roof rack system. So one day I installed the roof rack system ready for the solar panels to go onto it. Next day my van was stolen with a lot, lot, hell of a lot of bloody tools in it um, because I'm sharing the house at the moment and uh, will be uh, um, getting my own place shortly as, because another update is my eldest daughter wants to live with me. She's 11 years old, bless her. And um, she uh, wants to live with me so Anyway, so I'm still waiting for the insurance to pay out. It's November, it was stolen. It's now February. And the insurance, insurance will pay out, but the gap insurance doesn't. And I've, in the meantime, I had to get another van because I work in London and Chelsea a lot, which is a bloody nightmare to park. I've got a smaller van, a Ford Transit Connect long wheelbase. But I love it. So um, what I'm gonna do is convert it into a day camper. So. So in the summer I can sleep sleep on it by the beach and um, have a little uh, barbecue and a little gas cooker in it. Nothing nothing spectacular, not like the Sprinter. The Sprinter was going to have all the mod cons, insulation, diesel heating, electric, because they even have its own broadband on it. So uh, um, I could watch films, TV, you name it, it would have had it. I mean, I managed to take the Mercedes Sprinter on holiday last year, obviously before it got stolen, and we were camping out with my daughters and we used the side of the Mercedes Sprinter as a screen for the projector. So we watched, um, obviously being two daughters I've got, Mamma Mia, 
outside under the stars but it was a nice feeling and uh, so uh, I mean this is quite quite a few modicons um, I've uh, managed to wire up a if you look here this is a dashboard cam screen uh, it's got front camera and back camera on it for reversing and it records all the time but it's Android so my daughter's watching Netflix on it I turn my phone into a mobile hotspot and then watch Netflix on it and I go to my calendar appointments on it so I click on the any jobs I book in because I'm self-employed so I book it into the calendar click it on click on the calendar appointment there and that set me up to Google Maps on it which has got uh, you won't be able to see it but behind the camera is GPS antenna it's brilliant so I've wired that up and look it's all wired up through the loom holes up here and you, even this camera here is actually wired up through up here but it's all wired into the fuse board so when I turn it on that turns on when I turn it off it gives me the option to automatically turn off or go on its battery backup mode normally I'd leave it to turn off so uh, uh, the battery backup mode is not that great it's a bit slow to start up with you know you're talking 30 seconds so if you want to reverse straight, straight away you can't see but I am thinking putting sensors on this uh, van because I don't know what it is but it's a small van but I have a job bloody parking it. My Mercedes Sprinter, really long van, easy. It, you know, maybe I'm just used to the bigger vans. I mean, the van before the Mercedes Sprinter was slightly bigger than this. I mean, I love to have a van, but it, it was getting tired. The engine was just, I'd be lucky if I was getting 55 up a hill some days. It was uh, fits and starts. Uh, maybe need a good overhaul, but I just thought, you know, I think if I, if I saw it for sale again, I think I would buy it because obviously I was a f um, uh, the first owner to it. And this is a Fiat Scudo. And um, that would have been a, that would have been quite good, really. So, uh, yeah, I would have, been, would have enjoyed it, um, just doing it up. But it's getting the place for my, myself and my daughter. And also trying to work around, work around my daughter because she's only 11. I can't leave her on her own. So I need babysitters and whatnot for the f two up she's about 13 i should imagine 14. um i've got a younger daughter as well but she wants to stay with mummy i think because she wants her own space <laughs> if, if, to be fair because they're chalk and cheese them two lovely daughters but they grind each other every now and then like any brothers or sisters do they're very close in age so yeah so melia she's going to be nine next month and lily's le just turned 11 and it was an awkward party because it was Beauty and the Beast party, but that awkward age of 11 years old. Anyway, so um, I now have two solar panels spared now, so I don't know what to do with them, and they're proper solar panels. They, they would have been all right on the Mercedes Sprinter, but I think they're going to be a bit too big for this van, and I've got to put ladders on this van as well. Um, what else has happened? Uh, yeah, I put on weight, I put on loads of weight. I've never drunk so much as I did coming back to Guildford. I hardly drunk before, but the odd bottle of wine here and there. And obviously not working now. Uh, I've damaged my hip, fallen off a ladder, and I've, so I've got a trapped nerve as well. So I'm waiting for that to heal back, so I can get back into fitness. Um, but this year, hopefully, I'm going to go kayaking a lot, cycling a lot, get another camera because this is the only camera I've got apart from my handheld camera. And that's pretty much it. And I will speak to you when we get to Long Barrow. So here I am in Marlborough and we're filming hopefully on the dash cam as well so uh, we've been a bit of a nightmare because my audio record everything's going wrong today my audio record is on my old smartphone so I've got this microphone here and it's on the smartphone but um, yeah I don't think I'm going through Marlborough High Street though um, I know I've got to go through Marlborough to get to uh, Bristol so I'm sort of going to ask about face really um, yeah, so everything's going wrong today. So my brother bought me, my twin brother bought me a 4K camera, GoPro clone, but it's, it's had some good reviews, but used about four times. And um, it just packed up this morning when I needed it. And, uh, and I've got like a smartphone audio recorder, recording my voice now, so you get a clearer picture of my horrible dulcet tones. Um, dash cam should be recording as well 
and um, hopefully that would work out just right. I'm hoping it would. Um, yes, yeah, lovely, beautiful place around here. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely. And then um, you know we've got this one here, which is a bit more. It's called a bit more camera. I mean, they're all pretty much you know standard of a 4K, but I tend to record in 1080p, 60 frames per second. Uh, 4K tends to be a bit, uh, you know, it's not really 4K really, if it's 25 frames per second, unless I'm doing a cinema film, but yeah. So this is my first time f trying to film and talk. Oh, I don't really like talking much, but, well, in front of the camera, but, because um, I get a bit a little shy, but I have to get used to that. Um, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to go to Longbarrow, we're going to go to Silbury Hill and we're going to go to Avery Stone Circle and that, that'd be that. It's pouring down rain, then I'm going to come back another time and go to Bristol. But I will be going to Bristol as a, just to visit friends, but I won't be filming it. So um, again, like I said, things have gone all crazy. So uh, yeah, there you go really. So um, speak to you in a bit. Here I am, it's bloody freezing, so I'm gonna be as quick as possible. The construction of Longborough in West Kennet commenced about 3600 BC. Hang on, let's do it more dramatic. The construction of Longborough in West Kennet commenced about 3600 BC, which is some 400 years before the first stage of Stonehenge. And it was in use until around 2500 BC. The mound has been damaged by instrument digging by archaeological excavations in 1859 and 1955 to 1956 found at least 46 burials ranging from babies to elderly persons. The bones were disarticulated with some of the skulls and long bones missing. It has been suggested that the bones were removed periodically for display or transported elsewhere between the block and facade being removed and replaced each time. Recent reanalysis of the dating evidence suggests that the 46 people all died within 20 to 30 years of each other and that the tomb was open for 1,000 years. Well, here I am, I'm back from getting freezing cold. I've probably got frostbite, mud on my shoes, if I can. Ugh. So I'm gonna change them. And I'm gonna to go to Silbury Hill next. And look at the view, it's lovely. Silbury Hill, just going to find a car park and see how we uh, get in there from there really, so uh, who knows, it would be a bit fun. I don't think I'm going to be walking up here though, it's a bit muddy for that. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Here we go. Here is the view insight.
Silbury Hill, composed mainly of chalk and clay, and stands about 40 metres high. The hill was constructed in several stages between 2400 to 2300 BC and displays immense technical skill and prolonged control over labour and resources. Archaeologists calculate that it took 18 million man hours, equivalent to 500 men working for 15 years, to deposit and shape the area. Right, I'm going to climb Silbury Hill, because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to or not, but hey-ho, hey you live once, aren't you? So, here we go, that's where I've got to go up, from there all the way down. Wish me luck. Silbury Hill. <laughs> I'm on Silbury Hill, I'm so almost up there now. Oh, God. Just up that steep hill. And that's it. <sighs> Whoa, top of Silbury Hill, amazing. Constructed over several hundred years in the 3rd millennium BC during the Neolithic or New Stone Age, the monument comprised of a large henge, bank and a ditch, with a larger outer stone circle with two separate smaller stone circles situated inside the centre of the monument. Its original purpose is still unknown, although archaeologists believe that it was most likely used for some form of ritual or ceremony. The Avery Monument is part of a larger prehistoric landscape containing several older monuments nearby, including West Kennet Longbarrow, which we've just been, and Silbury Hill, which we've just been to. Right, here we are in Avery Circle. I've finished my, concluded my journey. It's quite lovely round here, actually. Yeah, lovely. Great. There we are. Stone end. Stone end. Avery stone circles over there, if you can see. Bye.